Hi, I am Doug Lyon, Media Lecturer at Brighton University. Hi Doug. Um, what do you use social media for? Well, I think the phrase social media, the clue should be in the title. It used to be the clue was in the title that social media was for social purposes. But in recent years, Twitter and Facebook and other things have started being used professionally for marketing and other things. So that's not really social anymore, that's professional media. So I have two Facebook accounts, one is for work, for my university lecturer job and one is for social and I keep them almost completely separate. So my work one is all my classes are set up as a Facebook group, I can uh, message everybody at once, I can see who's seen it, I can post things and throw links around. Uh, it's a very reliable platform, so I use that instead of um, Student Central, which is quite complicated to use and people, students don't go on it very much. And then my social one is for friends and family and general farting about. Thank you. Is that the only platform you use, Facebook? No, it's not. I have two Facebook accounts, one for work, one for social. I have a work YouTube account and a personal YouTube account. I have a work Vimeo account and a personal Vimeo account. I have an Instagram, I have Tumblr, and probably other things that I've forgotten about. WordPress, I used to have a couple of WordPress that I don't use anymore. What's the reason for you keeping your work and your personal so separate? I also have SoundCloud and MixCloud as well, so I've got quite a lot of things actually. Um, <coughs> well, Well, one of the reasons is that Facebook doesn't like you having two accounts. So I know a lot of people have two accounts, especially performers and people like that, have like a, a performer or like a dancer or a burlesque account, or whatever, and then their friends and family one, but they're usually under different names. And then the Facebook police have come down quite hard on that recently in making people use their real names, which is a marketing thing. I mean, that, you know that that's what it's about when they try and force you to use your uh, proper name that they're data selling or something's going on with that. But, um, so I'm a little bit careful about not mixing the two because I don't want Facebook to say to me, you can't have one of my accounts. That would be like, which hand you cut off now? Because so I've got like over a thousand friends on my social one and like 400 people on my professional one. That's like, I wouldn't, that would be a very difficult choice. But also, my work one is just a very clean platform for what I'm doing. It's like I don't really put anything of me on it. Mm. It's just a platform. Like all you lot join it with everything on it, but you could have a, a university email set up Facebook separate that was just for uni, but not, not one student has ever done that, never. Do you feel like it's important to keep that personal divide? Do you, do you project a different persona on each of your, of your platforms? Not really, it's more just like, if I'm going to post photos of my granddaughter, it's just not really relevant yeah. to this environment. It's like, you know, Facebook for me is really sweet that I can connect with my daughter and I can see photos of my granddaughter and my mum can see them and all that kind of stuff. I mean, it's just clutter really. It's more about keeping something clean and clutter. It's more an awareness of that. It's not like... I do have some students on my social one and usually when people graduate sometimes they move over to that. It's not like it's a secret thing or anything, it's more just like wanting to keep it clean and uncluttered. I think the internet is a sea of shite. It's mostly clutter. It's like it's really cluttered. I mean, you know, you lot go out, everybody takes 20 photos of yourself getting ready and go out and then you all upload them and then that's like 100 photos have gone up online and all you've done is gone out and got pissed. I mean, all that's just, to me, that's clutter. It's indiscriminate. So I'm just, I'd rather see it as being discriminate than dividing it. What your view on, like, the younger generation using social media for, is that is even relevant to anything? Or is you were saying it's clutter? Is it just adding to the clutter? Okay. So one thing that we do know about Facebook in particular is that now recruitment agencies and employers the first thing they're going to do is look at your Facebook profile it's something like 80% of recruiters now look at people's social network profiles to decide whether they give them a job or not or an interview or not 
Now, when I look at my students' profiles, it's like, well, people haven't thought about that when they've put stuff up. So, like, my, my criteria of putting anything online is, if I think I'm, if I, my mum could see it, my daughter could see it, and my boss could see it, then it's fine, it's out there. If any of that isn't something I'd want them to see, then why put it online at all? So I think that is an issue these days. I think people forget what's public domain and what's not. Like we had a thing in the week, like it's very easy to start a thread and then you add to it and then you forget what it is and then it's like actually somebody's just seen something that you've said about somebody that maybe you didn't want them to see. It's like, I don't think people are very present with what they're doing. <coughs> and then everybody has to document everything. So it's like me in front of a band, me in front of the Eiffel Tower. So I do recognise that I'm being interviewed as a token old person here and I'm an untypical one in as much as that I've got all these social networks profiles going on and part of that is because I'm an artist and a producer and you know in the olden days it was very difficult to make a piece of music and let anybody hear it. I mean you had to have a sound studio and you, you know you had to get something played on the radio now you can make an album in your bedroom and put it on soundcloud and send all your mates a link and, and that's amazing amazing technology so i really love it for that and i wouldn't call myself a photographer but i do like taking fo photographs and sharing them with my friends and family i mean that's what it was for wasn't it originally i mean i never really understood what instagram was meant to be for that was different from facebook i never really got that i never really got why tw Twitter is really just a Facebook update separated from Facebook. I mean, I know different things do different things, but you're kind of asking a very big question about the whole world of social media, when I think things have boiled down to some things have got a definite function and others haven't, and things like Tumblr. I mean, what even is Tumblr? Like, I can spend two hours on Tumblr and I, I literally don't know what I've just done there. I've entered the vortex of Tumblr world and come out of it thinking, oh, that's quite entertaining. I don't, know what, I don't know why I did that or what happened. It's completely pointless. It's very entertaining, pointlessness. But Facebook for me is very much about sharing, but it's not sharing like it used to be in the olden days when I was a lad. To give you an old person's quote, which would be, you know, if I knew one of you lot and an album came out from a band that we shared an interest in, I'd like to come round to my place, have a sit on the sofa, have a cup of tea, you know, settle down, play the whole album, both sides of it, without talking, and then have a chat about it. Like, I don't think anybody does that anymore. Like, listen to an album in the order that it was recorded. Now you just fling a link at each other and that's sharing it, but you haven't shared the experience. I think that's what we've lost. It's pretend sharing. Um, talk about how you feel that the younger people are not using social media for a good thing. Well, most of what you're doing with it is, is validating your existence by recording everything that you do and putting it online. So you go to a gig and then you film the whole gig or you go out clubbing and you shoot 50 shots of you getting ready and going out and then doing your thing and then going home and it's like great you've gone out and had a good time and come home but was that really worth recording it? Do you think well, it's fake? I don't really know what it is I think it is a form of narcissism and I think it's a type of insecurity about validating yourself by recording it for something for somebody I don't really know who it's for everybody does it do you feel like it's a type of self-esteem to make them look better than they actually are well in, th in theory yes because what happens is you know you you do your thing you do your girly thing and then you get 20 likes oh you look lovely you look pretty so then you learn that thing that oh right if i do that thing then i look pretty so then that, what happens is you end up with take me out have you seen that program take me out where all the girls look the same because they've all learnt that thing. It's really hard to look at you when I'm answering your question, that's the trouble. So, when, when things become a uniform, then something's happened. Like, if, as soon as you get a camera out now, you, you automatically adjust your body into this sideways thing on, you will do your duck face thing, the lads kind of start doing their lad thing, and it's like, 
That's new. I think that's kind of weird. Everybody does it. Is it bad? I don't know if it's bad, but it, it's, it seems very unconsidered to me. Do you feel like this is having an effect on regular use of photography? Yeah, because people think they're a photographer because they've got an iPhone in their pocket. And people think they can make a film because, I mean, it is amazing now that you can, you know, with this thing now, you can shoot something that's almost broadcast quality and edit it on your phone and then upload it. I mean, that's incredible. That's really, really new. Is it any good what people do with it? Not really, because it's a craft to make a film. It's, it's an art to be a photographer. So you listen to a podcast and then it's just half an hour of somebody talking shit to their mate. It's like, well, that, that would have made a great one minute radio piece, but you have no idea how to edit. Editing is a real specialist thing. And that's what I think is wrong today with social media is it's completely unedited content. Do you find that when girls and boys edit photos on social media that they're completely disorientating their self-image? They're, they're making up someone that could possibly not be who they are when someone were to meet them in real life? Well, yeah, because you're projecting a mask of what you think you'd like to look like. And then if people like it, then you think you're doing well. So you think, well, I'll carry on doing that. So then you start doing your eyebrow thing and then you start doing this thing that you get like oh right I'm obviously onto a winner there if you put something up and nobody likes it that's like a that's like as a comedian or a teacher when you say something and you have a tumbleweed moment where it's like oh god what's happened there like is that me is that them what's going on that's like an insecurity collapse isn't it but as long as a few people like it, they're like, oh, I'm probably doing all right there with my eyebrows or whatever it is you've got going on. Yeah. No, I think that's, that's good. What we've got.